Aloha, my name is Jason Hinkle, and I'm a graduate student here at the University of Hawaii in the Institute for Astronomy. Today I'm going to be talking about my recently submitted letter on the apparent relationship between the peak UV optical luminosity of a tidal disruption event and its decline rate, which is work I've been doing in collaboration with the All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae with the Assassin team. Tidal disruption events, or TDEs, occur when tidal forces from a supermassive black hole overwhelm the self-gravity of a star and rip it apart. This results in a luminous flare that may be seen in the optical, UV, and X-ray wavelengths. The properties of these flares may depend on a range of physical characteristics, including the mass, age, and composition of the star, and the mass and spin of the central black hole. Ground-based surveys like ZTF and Assassin find many of the TDEs we study here in this work, but because TDEs are so hot, we must observe them in the ultraviolet with space-based satellites like the Swift satellite shown here. To be included in our sample, we require that each TDE has 15 epochs of Swift observations and all the UV filters so that we can accurately fit the UV in optical emission as a black body. Here we show MCMC fits to each of our Swift epochs where we show best fit volumetric luminosity and affect the black body radius and temperature. We find that the black body radii generally rise prior to peak, shown here in the black line, and for objects with late time swift, we find that the black body radii slowly decline. Shifting our focus from effective black body radii to effective black body temperatures, we find that some objects exhibit short time scale variation in temperature between roughly peak and 50 days after peak. Generally, though, the temperature evolution is flat particularly at late times. Finally, we shift our attention to the volumetric UV optical luminosity shown in the top panel. One thing to note is that the luminosities appear to rise at different rates relative to peak, again shown with the black line. Another thing that jumps out is that the more luminous objects appear to decay faster, indicated here with the two arrows. Because of this, we look for a trend between the peak luminosity and the decay rate by looking at the Pearson R correlation coefficient in steps of 5 days. We find maximum at 40 days and show the comparison between the log of the peak luminosity and the difference between the log at 40 days after peak and the log peak here. The solid circles and squares are sources where we can accurately fit the volumetric peak, and open circles are sources for which this was not possible. We also find that when comparing objects that are unlikely to be TDEs, they do not fit with their best fit trend, as shown in the previous plot. As ground-based surveys like Assassin, Atlas, PanStars, and ZTF continue to find more TDEs prior to their peak, we will be able to further test this trend. This is exciting because if future studies confirm this correlation, it can be used to distinguish between real TDEs and other types of transients. For more information, please see my paper linked in the description below. To see more Aloha Briefs, please follow the IFA YouTube channel. Mahalo for watching.